So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, before we start with the session here, can you all please give me a quick information if you all can hear me, if all if you all can hear me loud and clear and see my screen as well. Please give me a quick information, everyone. If you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well. So you can use the questions tab here, guys. So give me a quick information. Okay, user. So we have a we have a participant, a user, user, Anand, Raghavendra, Yuvraj, Raj, Aditya. Wonderful. So thank you so much for the confirmation, everyone. So our main goal for this entire session here, guys, is now first of all. Now, before we start with the session, first of all, let me start by introducing myself. So my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I've been working in this IT industry for almost 10 years now. So basically, I started my career at working as a UI designer, designing the front end and back end of applications across different industry verticals, including retail, blank, retail, banking, pharmaceutical, location based services, insurance and satellite imagery. Right, so and mainly I've been working in markets of India, Canada, US, Singapore, Australia, and other Southeast Asian markets so far. So from then, from then, from there onwards, I have been leading global teams in development, design, and design development and marketing of these those solutions, which are mostly focused for enterprises. Right, and in terms of corporate training front, I've been working extensively as a corporate trainer, where we where I have trained the workforce of companies like. Accenture, Mercedes, EY, Google, Grab, Capture and I. So I've been working on training these work or training the workforce of these companies in, in and helping them in staying updated on the current trends and technologies so that they can use the current trends, they can use the current and latest strategies to deliver a more optimum solution to the client, right? Because again, as we know in this cut for competition, we will only the only way of surviving in the market is to provide a better solution a better user experience to the clients right and that's what i have been helping these companies in achieving that all right and the main most and now this session has only one and single simple rule that in case you have any questions in case you have any questions or any queries please feel free to ask your queries one by one in the same questions tab here guys right so suppose let's say when we are talking about any particular topic and again if you have any questions if you have any doubts any queries regarding the same you want to share something right or if you want you can also speak out you can if you want to speak something instead of typing you can simply let them let me know and i can unmute you so that you can start speaking right so in case you have any questions then please feel free to ask as many questions as you want so that i can make sure that your all of your queries are answered one by one right and Moreover, since we have a good number of participants joining in, so it may happen that some of your queries may uh, may be left unanswered, right? So because of uh, and again, it may get lost as well in the pile of questions that we will be coming that will be coming in, right? So in case some of your queries are left unanswered, don't feel disheartened, guys. Please make sure that you keep on posting the same question again and again until unless you have the clarity or you, until unless you get a clarity from on that question from my side right and i'll be more than happy to help you out in all of your queries one by one all right so now let's get started just a moment all right so now let's get started so currently our main motive of this entire session is to discuss on the usage of python how now what exactly python is and how we can perform web scrapping over Python itself, right? So how we can do web scrapping using Python and how we can visualize the data that we have gathered as a part of our as a part of our main objective of today's session here. All right. So now let's get started. So first of all, let's understand what exactly Python is. So now as you can see here, so currently Python is now Python is the most popular language out there, which is used for multiple purposes, right? So as you know, Python is simply a high level programming language that can be used for web development, for, for web scrapping, for data science, right? So Python is, we can say Python is the most hot selling skill set of 2019, right? 
so it's the most uh, is, it's, a, it's a language that is mostly in uh, that's the highest that is that's still having the highest um, amount of demand in the global market right so because again python is dynamic python can be used to scale things up python can python can be used for data science and as you know the all the entire segment of data science machine learning ai is currently on boom right since last since last almost more than half a decade right so python is again uh, and so simply an object oriented high level language right and python is again the main advantage of python is if we are if we don't have any kind of coding experience we do if we don't have any kind of coding background then we can get started with python because python is easier to learn as compared to other languages right whereas as we know if we are comfortable with java if we have a good command over java then every other language will become a piece of cake for us right but if you don't have if but if we are not coming from it background if we don't love to uh, love to code then we can get started on learning python right because again it will be much easier to learn and it has more why or we can say it, it, has, it has a wider scope in terms of its use cases all right next is again as we discussed python is really easy to learn and again python is also a part of open source that means here we have now here now it is all managed by a community where all the all the updates and again can be read it can be read easily right we can modify it right as a part of free and open source right next is it is always in how it's simply a high level language right that means we don't we don't have whenever whenever we are trying to build any application we don't have to worry about the memory allocation right because again this is this is again this is not required when we are writing code in python altogether right so python and again python is portable that means python now if we are developing any application right because on python then it supports multiple platforms so that suppose it supports linux windows macintosh android again it, it also supports multiple playstation windows c right so all of these can be created on top of python that's why python is so much popular because of its dynamic nature all right as a part of its dynamic nature here right and again since it supports multiple programming paradigm so suppose if we are comfortable with if we have been working with java with javascript right If we have been comfortable with Java, if we have been comfortable working with C, C++, then again, the, all the concepts have been derived from these language itself, right? But the but the syntaxes, but the way we write code in Python is much easier as compared to other languages, right? And then it is extensible. That means again, there are multiple libraries that we can that can be invoked by using Python. Like we have C, C++ libraries, right? And again, then we can also integrate multiple .NET components. If you're using Python, we can do that easily using Python, right? We can do this easily using Python language. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one of the example here. Suppose if we open up any web page, if you if we open any web page, suppose if we open up any category here, for example, suppose we open the category for phones. For example, we open the category for phones. Suppose we open up any particular product. We let's say we open that. Or suppose let's say we are on a category page, right? Now we wish to scrap the entire content here. For example, now we wish what we want is we want to list out all the available links on this particular on this particular page, right? So, so suppose there are 20 links there are 200 links available on this web page now what we can do we can simply count the number of links available on this page using python if we wish to save every hyperlinked text and source right suppose if now if there are 100 links available here so again if we want to store all those 100 links we have to do that manually one by one or we can run a simple python script for scrapping this kind of data that means how many links are available in which classes what exactly that the anchor text is so we can so we can run any kind of code to pinpoint any particular uh, any particular code or element that we are looking at or we want to focus on
all right and this is a main use case of use and again this is a basic setup for web scrapping right same way suppose if we search for let's suppose if we are looking for suppose statue of suppose let's say we are searching for statue of liberty now here we have on statue of liberty here we have the page available from wikipedia right now as you can see there are multiple links available on this wikipedia page here right and now what we want is we want as a part of a project what we want we want to list down all the links available in this web page using python using the concept of web scrapping right so so now here we could have done this manually or just to save time a, a considerable amount of time and resources what we can do we can simply run a simple code here we can run a simple python code and then we can scrap the data out of it and what kind of data we are looking for that's we have that's that's something that we have to decide let's say when we are looking for images when we are looking for specific hyperlink text we are when we are looking for specific object depending upon our requirement right and that's exactly what we refer as web scrapping So are we clear on web scrapping everyone? Please give me a quick information guys. So are we all clear on the basic concept of web scrapping? Please give me a quick confirmation everyone. Bhavik, Huzo, Karthik, Anand. Uh, yes, Anand, we'll be working on demo as well, step by step as we continue further perfect thank you for the confirmation now let's get right back Now, just now we had seen how exactly web scrapping works here. Now, these are different examples of, of examples and scope of web scrapping. For example, let's say when we are looking for the all for listing all the URLs in any given web page, then we can use web scrapping. If we are trying to inspect the content of the entire page, if we want to extract the data out of the which is available in that page itself, then we can use web scrapping. When we want to write the code here, right? Again, when we have the data, then we then we wish to write the code. Again, that can be useful so that we can simply pinpoint the entire code. That we, suppose if there's a section available on the other website, and now we are trying to replicate that section into our own website, then that can be also done using web scrapping. Right? And then, and as we have discussed, Python is the core language used for data science as well. That means we can run codes. We can simply write codes on top of Python, and then we can extract the data. That means we can uh, we can cleanse the data. We can take we can take out some reference or useful material, useful indexes out of those out of that particular pile of data here, right? And again, once the entire process has been done, and once the data has been extracted and process then it can be stored then python can be used to store the data in the required format right in the database and also in database in which column in which particular property how we have to save it that can be defined by python as well as a part of web scrapping Okay, Raghavindra, so I have a query from Raghavindra. So what, by the way, what are the prerequisites for running Python? So Raghavindra, we can install multiple IDs. Like we have Java ID, like we have Eclipse. There are multiple IDs available, which we can use for running Python. I'll be showing you one of the IDs in next couple of minutes. Is it clear, Raghavindra? Please give me a quick information. Perfect.
Now, basically, we use now basically there are main three type of libraries that we can that is currently available as a part of Python, right? Basically, there are three main libraries that is available as a part of Python here, right? And web scrapping, as we had discussed, web scrapping is basically done on X can be done using XML, CSV, and MySQL. Once the entire data has been generated, then the output can be saved as an XML, CSV, or directly into the database that can be stored when the entire web scrapping has been done has been completed uh sure krishna so okay can you please share this ppds of the same i joined late so missed some of the slides and wanted to see them again sure krishna so basically what we have to do is we have now you simply have to fill out the the uh, feedback form right and once we then we can simply go back and then simply list it out will be more than happy to address you to address your queries in that context all right is it clear krishna please give me a quick information Yeah, Jayashri. Krishna, perfect. Thank you for the confirmation. Now, basically, now how exactly now we have seen how web scrapping works. So basically, we have three main libraries for you that we can use for web scrapping. We have request, we have request library, we have beautiful soup, and then we have scrappy. Now, these are different libraries available in Python that we that we mainly use for web scrapping, right? And how many of you are comfortable or you have the like have any kind of experience working with python anyone please give me a quick information guys how many of you have a good um, or any kind of working experience in python uh, what's the knowledge here Okay, Vamshi, I'm working on no experience. Karthik, I have public no experience. Planning. Vamshi, I use for writing scripts. Uh, Jayashree, we are taking time just to make sure that we have to keep every user in loop, correct? Because again, some of us may be really experienced on these basic technologies and concept, but many of us are not correct. And that's why we have to make sure that we don't surpass over the, we don't pass over every, that these things don't pass the, over their head itself, right? That's why we are taking time and making sure that the, all of these concepts, if we are beginners in which most of the users are, it is clear for everyone, right? And soon we'll be also for, uh, proceeding to the practical lab, uh, practical part as well, doing some hands-on. Is it clear, Jashree? Please give me a quick information. Perfect. Thank you so much for understanding. Okay, Basavraj, working on Django for you. All right, wonderful. So no way guys in case you are you are again as you guys as you can see here some of us are experienced some of us have some kind of working experience in Python and some of us are totally new right no problem in that so let's first of all understand the basic basic setup of Python and how we can get started on doing the web scrapping right Vamshi so I have used beautiful soup to get the news updates that's great Vamshi so basically what we are doing here suppose now let now let's say we have these these three different libraries available we have beautiful soup scrappy python library for again that we are using for web scrapping all right 
All right, so now, now basically, now here we have now for data manipulation, we have a library called as pandas, right? So basically, we have a library called pandas. And pandas is basically used for data manipulation and analysis, right? So here we have a tableau data. Again, it, pandas is well suited for those use cases where we have data stored in a table, where we have, un, we have, where we have ordered and unordered time series data, where we have any kind of observation or statistical bit based data that means any kind of figure based data that can be used that can be scrapped by using pandas library we can do that all right now let's first now as an example here let's first of all understand what exactly is how you know, what, now basically what we are trying to do is we are simply trying to scrap the website for flipkart here right as a mo as a as a first motive what we are trying to do we are simply trying to scrap the flipkart website right for example let's suppose if we open up this link here if we open up this link now here we can see multiple links for all the available laptops all the available laptops here right now as a part of our hands-on what we are trying to do we are simply trying to look for the available look for the available number like how many products are available on the screen right how many products are available and how many of them are again suppose we want to find the number of links the average pricing we want to find the data for the number of products and what is the average rating and how and what is the median rating for all the products what is the uh, what is the average rating for all the products listed right so the multiple pieces of data that we can work on that we can work on in this example right yeah so now what we can do is we can snuff what we can do we can simply go ahead and perform the web scrapping here on top of python we can do that now before we can start web scrapping on python we will be needing an id we will be needing an id as well <clears throat> And again, as you can see here now, if we want to, if we wish to see the data here again, as you know, every web page now, especially these websites are completely dynamic, right? So what they have, they don't have any kind of physical data stored here. They are simply are picking the database, uh, the data stored from a database, right? So if we want to see the entire source of this page here, we have to do what? As we do already, as we do always, so we can simply right click on it and click on view page source. Now, once we choose to see the uh, we, once we choose to see the uh, the page source here, we can see the entire source code of the page that is being rendered to us, right? Or if we wish to see the details of if you want to inspect this particular element, what we can do simply right click on it and click on inspect, right? And as you can see, every piece of information is being stored in their respective IDs in their respective tag IDs here, right? For example, suppose if we are looking at the information for pricing again we can inspect right and as you can see here now this is a class defined for pricing here that means every pricing here will be uh, is being listed in this particular class here right so if we even if we tap on this one again as you can see here here we have here we are using the same class for pricing right so it, it doesn't matter for which item we are looking at they will all have the same class defined right so again if we inspect on this element again as you can see here we have the same class defined for pricing same class defined for for the product heading and so on right and again if you are looking to prove process data here then we can simply use these classes and that and that's exactly what we'll be doing in next couple of minutes as a part of our hands-on all right So basically what we are trying to do we are simply now we simply first of all have to pinpoint the class in uh, in which our data has been stored that we are looking that we are trying to look at right and then we can simply pinpoint the price name and rating by simply specifying different classes for pricing now as we discussed we had different class defined for the heading so we can use this class right then we have different class defined for pricing and then again we have different class defined for the for the rating here as you can see here, now for rating we have different class all 
all right and because again when we are scrapping the data obviously we need to store this in tablet formats so that we can use this for representation as well and that's exactly what we will be doing once we have scrapped it scrap the data then we'll be presenting this we, then we'll be visualizing over the over that data as well right and then now this is entire setup here first of all we have to import the libraries in in our id then we have to set the path to chrome driver that means what's the path of the url the url path for which we want to scrap the data right and then we have to start extracting it uh, start extracting the data using and storing it in multiple variables as a part of variables here all right and then once we are done once we are done again we can simply run the code by simply using this particular file here now every file now python has a file extension called as dot py that's like just like html has dot html we have for for javascript files we have js for cascading style sheet we have dot css same way the extension used for python is dot py all right now before we get started here first of all now for, before we get started on web scrapping we need an ide right and there are multiple ids that we can look at so if you search for python id suppose if you go here and we search for python ide then we can see the list of multiple ids we can either use eclipse we can use the ideally we can use pycharm atom eclipse so we can also use sublime text as well so these are so these are different popular ids that we can get started on right whereas the most popular is pycharm so we can use pycharm now pycharm is available as both as a paid version as a paid tool and available as a free tool as well right so paid tool has the support for integration among different platforms like we have html css and, and everything now this is available on a trial basis this is available on a trial basis here right so professional provides support for html js and, S and sql whereas community is only for the core development for the for pure and core and core development on top of python right so if you want to get started for the, for free for tests for our testing purpose then we can download the community version right let me share this link with everyone Here we go. So can you all please give me a quick information, guys? If you all have the link that has been shared, do we all have the link here? Please give me a quick information. perfect thank you for the confirmation everyone so now okay install perfect thank you for confirmation Ramsi. okay i have a qa from raghavendra so well web scrapping is used to scrap data from websites but what's the exact use of scrapping data from any site in real time as site itself display all the data in good shape okay first of all are we clear on the concept of scrapping raghavendra First of all, are we clear on the concept of scrapping? Please give me a quick information. Perfect. Now, web scrapping is used in real time scenario as well. For example, let's suppose we have a sports website, right? Let's suppose we are running a sports website 
where we want to showcase the users now for example we have a sport website where we are getting information about the live score about the trial about the real-time statistics right and again we need now we are simply we have an application in which we are giving these things to users right for example suppose here we have a ea sports website where the where the scores and the entire statistics is being populated on that website itself right and we have created a separate a separate sports application for our mobile, our, for our mobile users and now we want to present the the real-time statistics to them right so again we have not received any kind of, of official apis through, uh, through the uh, through the es ports right so what we can do we can run and we can run a web scrapping on the entire content available on the website right so that can be processed and then it can be shown to the users in real time obviously it won't be exactly real time but again that can be near to real time scenario as well so clear on this use case ragwind please give me a quick confirmation thank you for the appreciation and confirmation ragwind so are we clear on the basic use case for uh, for web scrapping guys please give me a quick confirmation everyone on the example that we are used just now on the sports website. Perfect. Thank you for confirmation, Basar Raj, Karthik, Bhavik. All right, so now let's proceed further. So now we now we can download and then we can install PyCharm. So once we have PyCharm in this is a platform that we will be at. all right so now pycharm now once we have now once we are getting started with pycharm what we can do we can simply start a new project here right and again here we can start a new project again here we can get started on adding a new project into our library that we, that we can do that right so here we can start a new project we can name the project as web scrapping Suppose if you want to call this as web scrapping, we want to call this as web scrapping project. We can create, we can open a new window, and this will install the virtual environment in which we can start working on top of our web scrapping project. And here we can simply add a new file called uh, here we can name this as suppose now since we are scrapping flipkart right so here we can name the main name this as flipkart right we can name the file as okay not flipkart we have to name this as flipkart because again this is a file that we are trying to create here just a moment this has to be a python file not a no so we have to create a python file here called flipkart.py because again flip all the python file will be saved with the extension of .py itself because py refers to the python file as a, as its extension okay smriti so why we are using virtual environment uh, we are not using the virtual environment here smriti this is our own system Okay, guys, are we all able to, to see my screen? Please give me a quick information. Everyone? Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation, everyone. So now, once we have this one installed, now we simply have to set up few basic libraries that we want to use to get started, right? 
so here we can get started by simply mentioning the library here we can get started by simply mentioning the library that we wish to import that we wish to import here right just a moment Let's increase a font size first so that the font becomes visible to everyone so that we don't have to strain our eyes. Let's increase the font size. So I hope this font size is comfortable for everyone. So that we don't have to strain our eyes, right? Perfect. Thank you for confirmation, Vinodhani. Now here, first of all, we have to start by importing the library for for beautiful soup, right? So here we can simply import the library called for beautiful soup here. Suppose let's say we can import the library for beautiful soup. Now we want to import this as soup itself. Then we have again we have to define the source from where we are simply importing this library, right? So here we have your library here dot request this will be the source right and again here we have to import the open url we have to import the url open the open url here and as a request as a request here so basically what we are trying okay i have a query from someone so ragwin so can you please repeat after creating the pro okay uh till what till what part till which point we are clear Till what point we are clear, Raghavendra? Okay, we simply have to first of all once we create a new project here We can simply click on file new and then we can simply choose the Python file as a new Python file here Right, and then we simply have to start by importing the beautiful uh, the beautiful soup library that we wish to use to start scrapping the content on Flipkart website All right so, so, uh, so even though when we are in, even though if we are new to Python, we can simply use the syntax here to import the libraries that no, because again, as we have seen here, we have three libraries, right? So currently we are working on the beautiful Swift library that we can use to import that we can import in order to get started on web scrapping. Perfect. Thank you for confirmation. Now, next part is now here we have to use one simple URL here called. Okay, just a moment, guys. Just a moment.
Okay, so let's take a quick break here for five minutes, guys, so we can set it up. And in the meantime, you can also set up and install PyCharm, and then we can resume after five minutes to continue our journey on web scrapping. Shall we? So in the five minutes, we can stretch our legs, grab a cup of coffee, and let's be right back. And in the meantime, do set up the PyCharm in case we haven't, so that we can continue from the same point. All right? Thank you. Hi everyone, are we all back from the break? Please give me a quick information so that we can resume. Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation. Now let's assume. Now here we have to simply now here we have to copy the URL that we are trying to scrap. So for example, let's say we open up this particular URL here, right? So now here we are trying to scrap this URL, correct? So here what we can do here now here let's suppose our main goal here is we want to simply list the number of products here as a small example for scrapping, right? Then what we can do we can simply copy this url here let's copy this up okay now let's use this now let first of all let's say we have to import again so from bs4 library we are trying to import beautiful soup beautiful soup beautiful soup and we are trying to include this as soup itself and from url live from url library here we are trying to import not from as a part of request we are trying to import as url request because again we need this we need these to get started on our on getting on scrapping the content right and then what we had to do is we simply in here we have to define the url that means the url that we are trying to scrap right and this will be the same url that we have copied right so we need so what we are trying to do is we are simply uh, trying to pro to scrap the content available in this url itself right so this is the same url that we are trying to scrap here that we can copy and paste here because uh, right and then we have something called as you client. So here we have to define the client. Again, this is what my URL, because again, the client that we are trying to, okay, not client it, it will be client. So you client that we are trying to refer here is the request that we have initiated. And again, in here, what should, now the index value here should be my URL that we have initiated, correct? So here it can be my URL that we have saved here. Okay, Raghavind, so please ping us the URL. Okay, sure, Raghavind. Let's let us, let me just copy the entire syntax here so that we can all use this URL here. Here you go. No problem. All right. Now let's say now here we. Once of all, once we have this, once first of all, once we have declared this URL here, correct? Then we have to define the page HTML. 
that means that the same page HTML that we'll be copying here, correct? So first of all, we have URL and Python. As we know, in Python, we do not need the we, there's no requirement for a semicolon at the end of each and every argument as it at each and every statement here. We do not need to have any kind of semicolon at the end of the of every of every possible statement, correct? So here we have to support not road, but here we have read because again we want the client uh, we want to get the object of read. We want to associate read to the client that we have initiated here, right? And obviously now once the job has been done, has been completed, we simply tend to close it, right? And here in here suppose say we declare a variable as page soup, and in here we have to declare the HTML parser as well. That means that will be used for because again we need to parse the entire HTML page as well, correct? So here we have to use now we have saved the client URL in the page HTML, right? So this will be page HTML and we want the parser to work on this page HTML itself, right? So here we can call the page HTML. So here we have to use the HTML parser. So, so what is the basic requirement or the basic use case of parser anyone in case we are comfortable with coding? Any idea anyone guys? What's the basic requirement of parser? Any idea anyone? What exactly parsers are and what exactly we why exactly we use it? In case we are comfortable or we are good with coding. Okay, if we, okay, no problem in case we don't have any any background for estimate for the coding then parsers are be okay shilpa so unable to hear you so guys can you all please give me a quick information if you all can hear my hear me loud and clear yes for me so convert to machine understanding format absolutely so what we do is we simply we simply pass it out right we simply parse the content. Correct. So what we do is we simply parse the content. That means again, that can be simply accessed and, and it can be easily modified by the program in which we are trying to add the link here. Right, and now we have to define the container here. And now here we, since we have defined the actual parser under page soup, so here we are. What we are trying to do is we are simply trying to find all the elements with the defined property, with the defined property here. For example, now remember we had seen that for every pricing, for every kind of pricing or HTML tag, what we are trying to do, we are simply using the classes, right? For example, for example, I suppose if we go back. Suppose now let's say we are trying to find the number of products in this given web page, right? So currently we have the heading for heading defined for each and every product, correct? So what we can do, we can simply right click, click on inspect. And now as you can see here, here we have the class defined as underscore two CLU hyphen one, right? And the same class will be used for each and every header here. Suppose if we inspect this one, again, this one is also having the same class. Again, if you use for different one, they will all have the same class here, right? So what we can do, we can use this class to pinpoint to locate what we are trying to for uh, to what we are trying to focus here, right? So suppose if we are trying to find all the the number of products or we are trying to find the heading, the name of the products, right? Then what we can do, we can simply use a syntax called find all. And again, this is what this is available as a as a anchor tag not as a div element but as an anchor tag correct and again if we wish to see this 
the listing of each and every product then these are defined as under division under division here so division is now we can either focus on division or we can focus also on the anchor tag as well we can do both right for example suppose we want to find the list of all the products here right so here we have the entire division for the product as you can see here right and this div is having this particular class here right so let's do one thing let's focus on this one let's copy the class name here and then we have to come back now here we have to mention this suppose now first of all we have to mention the first of all the element name right so element so what is the element name here guys anyone as you can see this is what this has been defined under div right so the element name here is div correct now we have to define the property associated with this particular element right so here the property would be suppose here we are trying to find class correct because each and every point each and every product have the same class defined correct so the class is an attribute to this particular html correct so here we have class and then we have to define the value for class right so the value for class is this one so this is a common class for each and every product for each and every listing here right suppose if we right click on this one click on inspect again as you can see here this is a common class defined for each and every product being mentioned here right so we can copy this up let's come back and here we have to simply define the the value for the class that we have declared here right so now basically what this will do is this will simply return now this will simply return the the now and again in here we are if we are trying to print it first of all are we clear till this part everyone on this syntax here please give me a quick information rami it depends upon us let's suppose if we are trying to find the uh, find the heading here suppose say if you would have our main objective would have been to find any common syntax or any common heading here then we could have used this anchor tag then we could have used this anchor tag here right so again we have the same common class defined for each every heading that we can do right for example let's say we wanted to find how many of the products here had have the pricing right so some of us may not have the pricing so again we can we could have used this division for pricing here as you can see it right so it all depends upon our requirement what we are trying to achieve out of this web scrapping so clear on this part Rami please give me a quick confirmation Basavraj, perfect. Thank you for confirmation. Now let's get right back. Now here, once we have find, once we have found this, now again we need to print it as well. As for okay, for printing, we can simply use the print command. And what we are trying to do, we simply are trying to print the length. Length means the number of, of values here, and again length of containers that we have declared. Correct. So this will be called length of the container for the not containers container that we have initiated here all right so are we clear on this on this entire setup here guys please give me a quick confirmation everyone
Okay, I have a query from Bhavik. So syntax will be same for all type of, of libraries. Again, it depends upon the library that we are using here, Bhavik. But again, the syntax will remain same. We simply have to choose the library that we are. We simply have to change the library that we are trying to use here. All right. And in case of any missing libraries, what we can do is now suppose when we are starting up, we maybe we may find multiple difficulties here. We may find multiple multiple errors being generated, right? So for installing libraries here, what we have to do, we simply have to click on file and then we have to move to settings. Now here in settings, we have project interpreter. Can we all see this? Everyone? Because first of all, we do have to install multiple interpreters as well. Like we have beautiful soup library. We have BS4. So we need to download and install it. Can we all see this? Right. So here now once we are on the screen here, we simply have to click on install. And here we can search for any particular library that or any kind of, of package that we are trying to install. For example, now since we have imported from BS4, obviously we need BS4 or, or installed, correct? So again, here we have to install, click on install package. And again, this entire BS4 will be installed, correct? If you are trying to install, suppose beautiful soup library here, again, we need to install it as well so that we can start using it. We can, we have to do that, right? For example, here we have beautiful soup. Then we have to install beautiful soup as well before we can get started. All right. And then only we'll be able to run the code here. And now for running the code, what we have to do is we simply have to right click here and click on run Edureka one. And can we all see the output here, guys, everyone? What we can see here now this now we have done what we have done. We are done with the web scrapping here and now we have returned now what we what is has been printed the number of products the number of products found on this particular URL here. Can we all see this? So are we all clear on how to start how to get started with web scrapping on Python? Please give me a quick information guys. Are we all clear on how to get started on web scrapping using Python? Anupama, Bhavik. Please give me a quick information, guys, so that I can be assured that this is all clear for everyone. Okay, Vinotani, why the length count for products of in of in page? We are simply returning the number of products here, Vinotani. And that's why we have used the length. That means how many products are available on this page that we have scrapped and that's why we have 40 percent listed here, right? And that's exactly what has been returned to us. So clear on this part, Vinodhani? Okay, in which part are we are having the trouble? Please point that part out. You know things that I can help you on on that context. Okay, Raghavin. So for, okay, so for installing beautiful so we have to again go back to our interpreter. Here we can search, and here we can search for the version of beautiful soup. And the current version we can install is the, the, the current version is 3.21 that we can get started with. Okay, Bhavik, so we can perform multiple things here. We can perform now, suppose now obviously we are short on time here. 
but let me give you an, an overview of what can be done using web scrapping for example let's say we are trying to find the sum of all the pricing available in this page right we have we are we want to uh, we want to find the average pricing of all the products listed on this page here right we want to store the link of every possible products or products listed on this page then that can also be done as a part of web scrapping right we want to find the average rating of all the products available on this page and that we can do as a part of average product rating here right so multiple things that means any kind of analysis we want to perform on this particular page then we can do that using python all right and let me share this entire code that we have used so we can all use the same exact code in case we don't we run on any kind of issues so i've shared the entire code guys please here you go so that the possibility of generating errors is zero all right so these are different kind of web scrapping that can be achieved using python using python here right so we can store all the links available as a part of a python what we can do is we can also go ahead and use regular applic applications expression in the application itself right so the basic idea here is suppose let's say first of all let's first of all understand what exactly are regular expressions right for example here we are trying to find the name and age right again we can store them as object as well that means the first name of all the first letter of all the name is in uppercase right and age is again re represented by numbers right again then we can define the pattern here by using regular expressions we can define the pattern that needs to be followed when we are scrapping the entire data here as a part of regular expressions right and we can use python for visualizing data as well that means whatever data we have captured in this example as we have done so we can simply showcase we can simply present this data in the format of a or in the format of bar graphs venn diagrams or pie chart depending upon our requirement we can do that all right depending upon our requirements here and basically why we need to visualize data because again multiple team members if we have stakeholders if we have multiple team members then visualizing data in these formats become useful for for us in those cases right so there we don't have to explain things verbally the entire graph entire venn diagrams pie charts or bar graphs will be doing the entire explanation for us right in those cases and that's exactly why we'll be using data visualization there all right and as always we do not why to just stay in a smaller circle right now currently we have just started our journey on web scrapping using python so now if you want we can simply explore the possibilities of learning more about how we can perform multiple analysis on top of python how we can use python to get started on web scrapping one by one right and again we have the course of a, we have a full fledged mastering course master course available from edureka where we can learn more about python step by step right so let me share the link here guys we have python certification training offer where we will be learning more into into each and every segment for python Now here we'll be focusing on the Python on the Python introduction, how we can manipulate data using Python, what are different libraries available in Python, mainly NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Then again, we'll be discussing on how we can perform the supervised learning as a part of ML, as a part of machine learning. What exactly, how exactly we can perform the unsupervised learning, and each and every module that we can see here, guys. These are again we maintain a complete balance between the topics and multiple hands-on so that we get a good insight on how on how to implement these topics in real world scenario right because until unless we work on the hands-on on the sample projects we won't be getting that much of a clarity here right and that's exactly what we are trying to achieve
All right. And I really hope you all had a great time. You all had uh, had a meaningful 90 hours, 90 minutes that we have spent in the past, right? Okay, I have a query from Rami. So what is the tool for visualization in, in Python? We can the most popular is matplotlib. Rami, we can use matplotlib for data visualization there, right? Again, we have C, we have Cborn, we have Plotly, but the most popular is matplotlib. And that's exactly what we'll be discussing as a part of data visualization in our entire subvection training as well. Is that clear, Rami? Please give me a quick confirmation. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining for last 90 minutes. And as a, and again, after we end the session here, guys, you'll be all will be getting a small NPS feedback form. So please do rate us excellent in that feedback form as a small token of appreciation for the hard work and time that we have put in for last 90 minutes. So please do rate us excellent in that feedback form and do not forget to fill in that feedback form because again, if you forget, then you will be missing out on the discounts that you'll be getting on these courses, right? So please do make sure that you fill up those feedback forms by rating, by rating us excellent so that you'll be eligible to get discounts on the courses offered by us, right? And hope to see you all June or hope to see you all soon joining the courses here so that we can continue our journey that we have started today. All right. So thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day ahead. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.